SoundingTheAlarm.com. Warning, the events and issues of this broadcast are real and eternal. This is Trevor Davis sounding the alarm on August 29, 2013. I've posted things to share today in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, as this is being recorded, there's wars and rumors of wars underway, and a lot of people are talking about what's going on in Syria. There's a political skirmish underway, and there's been people harmed by, apparently, chemical weapons. And the United States of America is posturing itself to oppose and take military action. What we need to know that is everything that goes on in this world is smoke and mirrors. It's, it's theater. They actually call it theater. In the military action, they call it theater. And there's people that are playing a part, acting a part, demonstrating a part. But to know the reason behind what is underway requires perception, ability to cognitively understand in a skill of wisdom. And as a child of God, God gives us perception, ability to see beyond the temporal world, beyond the physical world. Just We want to have a true perception and an understanding and a knowledge and a wisdom that goes beyond natural abilities. Christ is our wisdom. And we want to have knowledge. We want to grow in our knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We want to be seeking the Lord. We want to be full of the Holy Spirit and have a clean, pure heart before the Lord. And as we pick up our cross and deny ourselves and follow the Lord, this is, this is how we have true perception. Our judgment is correct. Jesus himself, as the only begotten Son of God, said he didn't come to do his own will. He didn't come to speak his own words. He didn't come to do his own thing. He didn't come to go for the gusto, climb the ladder of success. He came to do his Father's business. He came to fulfill all righteousness. He came to fulfill Scripture and was led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led him into some dire and severe occurrences. What happens is Jesus said, I don't do my own will, but as my I see my Father, that's what I do. And he said, my judgment is true because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I can of my own self do nothing. John 5.30 So the opposite is true. If you're doing your own will, your judgment is flawed. I've seen this with in Christian land, in the leaders of Christian audio, internet audio, shortwave audio, web, you know, personalities. And I'm not. I'm not talking about religious world. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about those that would know better, should know better. And you know, it's like Jesus when he spoke and he rebuked the Pharisees and he rebuked the scribes. He rebuked the religious leaders because they trusted in themselves. And their judgment was backwards many times, as we may illustrate today. You need to have true judgment. You need to have true discernment that comes from the Lord. And you need a clean heart. Otherwise, you're just going to believe the illusion and the delusion. So, there's military action setting up. Russia, China opposing the action of the United States. Obama not seeking approval of alliances, but it's saying he'll go, you know, he is a renegade. He is a rebel. He is a lawless man. He's a, he runs a lawless government, and many of the, those that are in the, in the United States government are lawless. And it's perfect because they reflect a lawless people in a lawless time. We're seeing the fulfillment of Scripture. And then in the religious world, the church is on every corner like convenience stores or restaurants pick your flavor of religion but how many are really seeking the Lord how many are really 
building according to as he builds. But the scripture says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And that was the temple that, that was being spoken of there. The temple of God is not made by hands. It's not made of stone. It's made out of people that are redeemed by Jesus Christ. And God dwells in them through the Holy Spirit. The true church. It's time not to be going to church. It's time to be the church. And I pray you see the difference. I pray you see that we are in the times of apostasy. Just like Jesus said. The last days would encounter. There'd be very few that would be saved. But there's going to be many that are going to say, Lord, Lord, you taught in our streets. You ate with us. We drank with you. We knew you. We heard your teaching. We did many great works. But he'll say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. We're seeing lawlessness increase and increase. So there is underway. What Jesus said when he outlined the last days, he said there'd be wars and rumors of wars, but the end's not yet. Yes, be observant. Yes, there's a lot of skirmish. There's a lot of things going on in the world. Unprecedented events with weather, with destructions, with e economic things that are taking place. Unprecedented. Just like the Lord said. And it will increase so. And it will be as a snare upon all them on the face of the whole earth. And, but the Lord will shorten the days for the elect's sake. The Lord has shortened the days. Otherwise, there'd be no flesh alive, is what Jesus said. Praise the Lord for that. Isn't it interesting? In Revelation chapter 6, the first couple verses, I'll read this. And I, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals... And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Continue to read this, ladies and gentlemen, in this revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave him and Jesus gave it to an angel and the angels gave it to John. It's in the first chapter of Revelation. What nation in the world today has more military bases throughout all the world? What nation today goes forth into Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Libya, Egypt, now Syria. At one point in time, the second seal will be open and this conquering that goes forth, whoever they're serving, they're serving a one world agenda. They're not serving the people, they're serving the secret agenda by rich men. They are Luciferian. They worship the devil, the dragon, the serpent, the devil. And they will fulfill what the scriptures outline in book of Revelation 13. And read 16 and 17 about Babylon that's worldwide in every nation of the world. And as every single world leader, every single king leader has committed fornication with this beast, this Babylon, the harlot, full of drunkenness by spilling the blood of the saints of God throughout history. But it'll culminate as this unprecedented world government comes together that's Medo-Persian, Egyptian, Babylon, Greek, and Roman, such as never before seen and you will not be able to buy or sell without a mark that's given. It'll be instituted. And they'll be able to see everything. They'll be able to hear everything. They'll be able to know everything through technology. And isn't that infrastructure being put in place now, even in your local grocery store? On your TV, on your radio, on the internet, on your phone? As you drive down the street, the cameras? Can you see? Can you perceive? 
Or are you just going right into the snare, unaware? So, I know this, that my focus and the focus of the servants of the Lord is to be the gospel. Because in James chapter 5, the Lord said he, he, the, that we are to have patience for the coming of the Lord. For the Lord has patience. Endurance. And God is looking for a harvest of souls. He's waiting for the first, the former and the latter rain. He's waiting for precious harvest. And there will not be a harvest unless the seed is planted. And what is the seed but the word of God, the gospel? We are to go forth with the gospel that can save men's souls. And there will be people through these dark, dark, dark days of oppression and tyranny and fear and as even the heavens are showing bizarre signs, signs in the stars, signs in the moon and the sun with great wars and death taking place and people being deceived by false prophets, false spiritual leaders leading them astray and this Depravity of sin engulfing men's hearts, drowning them in destruction because they were covetous. God is not mocked. He will not be mocked. What you plant will grow. That's why you want to seek the Lord and glory in the Lord and not any of your works, not any of your knowledge. And certainly don't glory in your flesh, but glory in the Lord. When Jesus came... He was quoting the prophets so often. And here's a text through in Isaiah chapter 29, 10 through 13. I want to read this. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and has closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, has he covered. And the vision of all is all become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draws near me, with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. You see what happens? This happened in ancient Israel. It was going on in Israel with the Pharisees and the scribes when Jesus was here ministering physically. And it's true throughout church history. It's true today. That there's governmental leaders of the world, political leaders, and there are spiritual leaders that lead institutions, denominations, varying forms of religion, of the faith of Jesus. But they're blind. Because they talk about God, they honor God, they draw near to God. Oh God, we love you. But their heart is far removed. It's full of the world. It's full of pride. It's full of sensuality and boasting and building up their own empire building up their own ministry and their own name exactly the opposite of jesus they're seeking to be honored they're seeking to be praised by man they're seeking to please man rather than god they're exactly the opposite of what the lord would have them do blindness spiritual blindness it's a hard issue your perception is a hard issue and who can cleanse your heart but God only? One day, Jesus was talking. And he told them how backwards they were. This is in Matthew twenty-three, twenty-five. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. And within, they're all full of extortion and excess said the same thing in Luke 11:39 Of course Judaism was an extra biblical reform of religion violated the word of God it was corrupted after the exile into Babylon the rabbinic Judaism was formed 
and they were keeping their traditions of man rather than keeping the word of God. Jesus said in Mark 7 that their worship was in vain. Worship was in vain because they were keeping traditions rather than following the Lord. So they made this elaborate religious system of cleansing, cleansing the outside of what, how to wash your hands, how to clean the cups, the pots. But the Lord was pointing out it's, it's not what comes into a man that defiles him, but what's, what comes out of him is what defiles him. They had it backwards. And how often religious world does have it backwards. For example, serving. Jesus, the greatest of all, was servant to all. But yet we have in the churches men sitting as kings, acting as kings. They're false shepherds. They're hirelings. When the Pharisees saw it, it marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. This is in Luke eleven thirty-eight and following. And the Lord said unto him, Now do you, Pharisees, make clean the outside of the cup and platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. And that word ravening has to do with plundering. It has to do with greediness, money, scheming. And I've known men myself that spoke of Jesus and specifically did works that caused a public reaction to give more money. They were greedy dogs, loving their own will. They were like Saul that rationalized their disobedience. And I've had to separate myself from such men, as any servant of the Lord should do. You fools! Did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? But rather give alms of such things as you have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Jesus just goes on and describes. They love the uttermost part, the big they want the honor, they love the titles, they got it all backwards. They're not servants. He, Jesus called them sepulchres where you place dead bodies. They're always opposing the acts of God. They're opposing the servants of the Lord that come in his name. Back to Matthew 23 in this context. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. We're talking about religious leaders. Hypocrites. You're acting. For you may clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they're full of extortion. In excess, you blind Pharisee, listen, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. What wisdom is that? God isn't against cleanliness. God wants us to be clean from the inside out. As our heart is cleansed through the Lord and by brokenness, in sincerity before him it is expressed righteously before the lord and he is glorified in his saints holy ones woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you are like a whited sepulcher which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. How important is a clean heart? Well, Jesus is showing you. Speaking to the religious world. Speaking to the religious leaders. Clean the inside that the outside could be clean and stop being a phony baloney. A very important text I read this morning came from 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter the Apostle. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. That's it right there. 
He was a witness of the sufferings of Christ. I want you to think about this for a minute. Peter knew Jesus, spent three years with him, ate with him, laughed, cried, listened to his teaching, interacted, observed Jesus. He saw the scriptures being fulfilled. He marveled. He knew Jesus. He saw it coming to pass at the very appointed time of the Father that Jesus would suffer at the hands of the Gentiles and suffer at the hands of his own people. And Jesus was betrayed even by Peter himself. He saw that Psalms 22 being fulfilled, prophecies in Isaiah being fulfilled, the suffering servant of the Lord. He saw what Jesus encountered, when the false accusation, the mocking, the spitting, the smacking him in the face with their palms and reeds, giving him vinegar to drink, with the crowds angry like bulls of Bashan around him, surrounding him, mocking him, laughing, sneering. What Pilate said, what the government of Rome and the armies surrounding him, whipping him, beating him, putting a crown on upon him, giving him a purple robe, and gambling for his clothing, stripping him bare in front of everybody. Jesus, like a lamb, endured all this for our sins, for the sins of the whole world, the sufferings of Christ that Isaiah prophesied, that was testified by the Spirit of God through the prophets of old. Peter said, I'm a witness. I'm an eyewitness. I saw it. I encountered it. Jesus endured that. He, he despised the shame, says in Hebrews 12. But he endured it for the joy of bringing many sons to glory, sons of God in Jesus, the man, Jesus Christ, the new man, Jesus Christ, not of Adam, but a new man, a new creation of, in Jesus. And Peter says here that I'm a partaker of the glory. Yes, it is glorious. It is glorious, Jesus, what you did. Because through that shame, and he did die and was buried for three days and was raised again from the dead by the Spirit of God, by the glory of the Father. It was seen by over 500 people. I want to read to you what Paul, in reflecting on this, Paul the Apostle was religious, a Pharisee, zealous about the law, killing Christians, thinking he was doing God's service. And the Lord Jesus had mercy. God had mercy upon him. Because God had a calling upon his life. Made him an ambassador of Jesus Christ to share this good news, this gospel. Paul was talking about this in Philippians 3. He says, beware of the dogs. Beware of evildoers. Beware of the concision. Beware! A true apostle, a true leader warning you, among you are false people, liars, deceivers, con men. They're not about the Lord. They're about using the Lord and they want to bring you into bondage. And this is what has been warned by the apostles. Go read it. He says, we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ. Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Again, we come back by the Spirit of the Lord today. We are worshipers of God. And we don't keep our traditions. We keep the, the Word of God. We walk in the Spirit. And we rejoice in Jesus. We don't rejoice in our works, our knowledge, our accomplishments. We don't rejoice in anything that we do. We're rejoicing in the Lord. We don't have confidence in the flesh. The flesh is crucified. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man thinks that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Listen to what he says. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. 
Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. Paul had the perspective. That's what it is from God's perspective. Anything of your flesh, anything of the world, anything of sin and unrighteousness is dung, refuse. It's detestable stench before the Lord. And that's what you need to realize. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now, this is Philippians 3.10. Listen to this. We talked about Peter being an eyewitness. We talked about him being a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Knowing Jesus. Oh, oh my gosh. All these scriptures being fulfilled in living color right before him. And look at Peter. Look at Paul. What he says. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect or mature or complete, be thus minded, be in harmony. This is the way to think. This is the way to act. This is the way to live. And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even the Son to you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. I hope that speaks to you. Because we are seeing the fulfillment of Scripture on many fronts. But God has a work for his people to be in Christ. To be doing his business, to be about the harvest, to be about planting the seed, to be led by the Lord, to have true perception, clear sight. Not don't be blind, don't be dumb, don't be like a dog, don't be after the world, don't be using the world, but be separate unto the Lord that He can use you and glory in the Lord, glory in Christ. Press for that mark of the high calling of God. That's in Jesus Christ.